Hey guys, what is up? Welcome back to part nine of our WordPress plugin building series. Uh, a couple things here. Since we last uh, were doing this, uh, something happened with my XAMPP where it essentially uh, deleted a bunch of stuff. I'm not really sure how it happened. Um, I was moving stuff around and I think I may have accidentally deleted the, the plugin I was working on. Um, Anyway, so I had kind of had to restart uh, from scratch. Uh, I actually have a uh, video before this one though where I've been creating an automatic tool to create plugins automatically for you, at least give you a starting point. And you can go and check that out um, as well. That's how I kind of made it back here pretty quick. So the, today's video, let's just get right into it. Um, what I decided to do is take this a direction where we're gonna start incorporating different APIs into our plugin and kind of display some data with that. And I, I figured I would at least like try to make it fun, have a few different cool APIs. I think I found like this, you, you know, YouTube's an obvious one because that's what this channel is. And then I was thinking maybe like, I found one that was a like all Pokemon importer. Like you could, we could make like a Pokedex website or there's lots of really cool APIs out there. We could do weather APIs. Um, I don't know exactly which sure what direction I'll take it 100%. Because I, I, I'm just going to keep doing new stuff and kind of showing all the different things you could incorporate into a plugin. And then you can kind of make something cool out of all the video combinations. But anyway, uh, I made this screen. It's kind of very similar to what I already showed you how to do. All I did was create a, a bootstrap in our plugin. If you have been following this course, you'll already have something similar to this, except I had a drop down one and uh, in the last one. And I kind of had, like I said, I had to rebuild this because the last one got deleted. But what we're going to be building is a YouTube API importer. And today what we're going to focus on is just how do you use the YouTube API? How do you call it in? And sorry if you hear a dog's feet clock. And I have a very small dog that refuses to lay down. Uh, and he's just kind of walking around looking for water. So what we're going to do is we're going to get ourselves a YouTube API key and a YouTube channel ID. And then we're going. I'm going to show you how to uh, make a request to the uh, YouTube API and encode the JSON response. And then we're gonna probably output a few videos on this page just so I can show you an example of how it works. And then maybe in this video or the next one, I'll show you how we can take uh, those videos and we can store them into our database and then we can output them on the front with a shorthand, uh, with a short code call. And so you can import videos and output them. And there's some things in this video that you may not know about YouTube, uh, about its API, which I had to learn the hard way and I'll tell you about. So anyway, back in our uh, WordPress, plugin, the names are going to be slightly different than you saw last because I had to regenerate it and I used my automatic plugin generator, which like I said, you can find in another video on my channel. I'm still working on that. It's a free program. I'm not charging anything for it. I haven't released the download to it yet, but because I just wanted to kind of make it a little bit more user friendly and then I'll let people play around with it. But anyway, all I did was in the partials page for the general settings, uh, I just created a field. We already talked about how to do this setup field, do actions and settings fields. And I created a YouTube API key and a YouTube channel ID. And then inside of our plugin or inside of our um, class plugin, I went ahead and added it to the loader so that it's initializing those settings. And like I said, you can go back and see the videos before where I did this and then registered those settings. So now we have them inside the uh, database for our API key and our, and I, you know, here's an example real quick. I just put something in like this and submit. And then I'm having it echo it back into the field, whatever's in the database. So as you see, it's saving. Okay, so what I wanted to do was, uh, one thing I wanted to show you how to do was first how to generate a YouTube channel ID. Uh, this is something that's, uh, it's kind of weird that sometimes YouTube doesn't give it to you by default, it's like on your own channel or something like that. So let's just say get YouTube channel ID because I have some code I've written for this. I've already done a lot of stuff with YouTube's API and so I have some code I'm gonna pull from. And there's a few websites out there let me take a look here. There's a website I use. I'm trying to remember which one it is. Yeah, yeah, right, okay. So let's just go on over to YouTube. Um, I think I'm probably just gonna go for probably my own channel. Let's just head over to YouTube. I'll probably go for my own channel. I usually use like Motor Trend or something like that because they post new videos all the time. Okay. And then I'm just gonna grab um, my channel link here. Put it back over here and let's see what it comes up with. So here's my channel ID and all the information correlated to my channel. So now let's take it back to uh, back to here and let's go ahead and open up a new notepad. 
and paste it into here. This, by the way, is the code I've pre-written for this tutorial. Um, I've used this code many times, and I did write it actually for a Laravel application, but we're just going to rework it for this. So this is my channel ID. And now what we need is we need an API key. Uh, YouTube requires that you use an API key when you access them and it, and it quote limits it quota limits you to I'm pretty sure a thousand requests a day which let's stop and talk about that for just a second you would say to yourself right I'm never gonna cap a thousand requests a day with YouTube's API uh, you'd be wrong because every time you make a request say you load a page and you load 10 videos from the API right you do like a loop or something and you read 10 videos or something like that Every time you reload your page and it makes a request, you're making 10 requests, 10 requests, 10 requests, and it's really easy to cap out your um, thousands. So we're actually gonna do this in a way that it saves the videos to our database and then we call them from there. And that way it's more slick. It doesn't have to always externally request and it's faster loading. It doesn't rely on YouTube. And then also uh, it doesn't make requests. So you don't have to make as many requests. All right, so generating a key is pretty simple. I have it open over here in another window. This is uh, inside of my uh, API, uh, Google APIs for developer. You do not need to pay for this key uh, the way that we're gonna use it. You can just go into the credentials, you go into their APIs and services, you click on YouTube, and then you go to their credentials and you create credentials. And I'm gonna create a new key right now, just an API key. And we're not gonna, I'm gonna delete this key after this tutorial so that nobody else can use it but me. So I will, I will be deleting this key. But for the case of this tutorial, we're gonna take this key, we're gonna paste it in our key. Okay, so now we have our key and we have our channel ID. So now we're ready to uh, make a request. So let's go start building the code for our request. All right, so in our settings callback page, we're actually gonna do this in here and I'm gonna put it underneath our, uh, Jumbotron just to output it here and then we're just going to do it just to show an example of how it works. All right, so we're going to be running this in PHP. We're going to uh, make the request and then we're going to do what's called a JSON decode and it's going to uh, take what's JSON response, which is generally what you get from uh, API calls and we're going to convert it to a PHP uh, object so that we can read from it the parts that we want. So the first thing we need to do is the first thing we need to do is we need to save our key and our uh, channel ID into our database and we're going to do that right here. So what we're going to do so what we're going to do is we're going to take our API key and our channel ID and we're going to put those right here and then those will be saved in and now we can read these into our PHP on the same page here. We can actually read those back out the way that it's echoing the get options right here. We can do that down here. So first things first, uh, it's kind of unnecessary, I guess, to create an extra variable, but I'm gonna do it just to give you an example so that you can see very clearly what's happening. So we're gonna call this the YouTube key, and that's gonna equal get option. Uh, okay. And the, and the key, that's right here. That's the options being saved to the database. And we know it's already saved, right? We already saved it in. So we don't have to worry about it being empty. If we didn't know if this was empty, this PHP code would actually only authorize once both these fields were uh, known to contain something. But since I'm writing this, knowing that they're not gonna be empty, I'm not too worried about it. Otherwise it's gonna throw an error because um, your YouTube call will be missing information. And then we're just gonna say the channel ID. And we're doing the same exact thing here. Okay, and then we're just going to grab the channel ID. So now we have two variables that now contain the channel ID and the key. And the next thing we're going to do, I'm going to paste this code and then I'll show you what it's doing. So this is a code that just calls into the YouTube uh, Google APIs for YouTube in their version 3. So we're going to create a variable called video list and it's going to use it. Remember I talked about a JSON decode and then it's going to call a file get contents which requests the XML response or the, not the XML but the JSON response, I'm sorry. And if we take a look down the way, there's a few parameters in here that we need to set or that we uh, I don't have set that we are going to, we could have set on the front end, but in this case, we're just gonna hard code it. So in the channel ID, it's gonna be requesting the channel ID. This is uh, variables from another program I built. So we're gonna change it. And then at the end, it's gonna want your key. So we need to grab, not that part, we need to grab the YouTube key and we need to paste that at the end, right? So these variables are being called real time, appended to the request. Now, max results is something I didn't cover. Max results is how many videos you want back from the channel. In this case, uh, we created a variable for it, or I did in my last program, but I'm actually just gonna put in uh, five. 
So we're just going to make a request for five right here. And so now we have a uh, a video list request, which by the way, I'm going to post uh, code in the comments for a lot of this stuff uh, for this entire file that I've written so that you'll be able to access it as well. And it'll make it a lot easier for you to reverse engineer. Uh, okay, so now we have the uh, JSON request in. So that's going to make the request. And then what we need to do is we need to sort through the items and output. And remember what I said in this video, we're just going to be doing, I'm just showing you how to make the request and output. And then the next video, we're going to probably cover um, saving them to the database and all that business. But I'll show you at least how to get started. Okay, so we're going to create a for each loop that's going to look like this. And like I said, the, you will get this code. I'm just doing it so that these videos can stay a little bit shorter than me actually hand, hand typing all this stuff. All right, so we're going to create a for uh, each on the video list items that's what the um, each one's returned in the JSON as an item so and we're gonna treat it as item and now we have access to a bunch of internal stuff that we can output in this case what we're gonna do is we're gonna have five videos so we're just gonna output let's just say all of the uh, video how about the video titles let's just go for that so all of the uh, items that are all the stuff that gets returned to you uh, when you request to the YouTube API gets returned through what's called a snippet and that's a, a part of the item so like as you see in the for each there's items as items so item is our accessible item so let me paste an example so this right here is going to return uh, a title or a video title of the first video in the list, right? This is the current video item it's dealing with because it's a for each loop. It's going to grab and go through all five. So let's just echo the uh, video item title and let's go ahead and give it some space or maybe even uh, let's just break them up by a couple of equal signs, maybe something like that. Okay, I could have done a new line too, but I'm just going to go ahead and break it up like that. Now, even in this example right here, if we go refresh our page, it should already be pulling my most recent five video titles. Let's take a look and, and echoing them down here. Okay, now if you take a look here, uh, it's already doing it. So it has building WordPress plugins automatically. See, that's one title because it got to the, the double equals. It has the second one, which got to the second title, the second, you see that? So that was a success. It's already successfully calling the first five titles of my most recent YouTube videos. And so how about, let's do something like this, just as another quick example. So let's do something a little more interesting than just echoing the title. Uh, in this case, let's go for, yeah, let's go for make them each a di their own div. So let's echo, and this, this could be way more efficient. I'm just doing this kind of quick offhand. And let's say, uh, well, I'm not going to make them all. Uh, and then let's go ahead and end. Uh, let's do an, a final echo, which ends our div and uh, breaks the line. So let's just say div, and then let's just hit it with line break. All right, so now this is going to do this each time, right? The video gets brought in. So the first video, video number one, is going to open up a new div, have the title echoed, exit but let's go ahead and do something a little more interesting too like let's output the video's description and its thumbnail let's do that that sounds good and also let's let's actually give this a style let's say um, we're just gonna do inline styling on this we could give it a class obviously and all that but let's just say the border is two picks solid black all right let's just inline give it so that we can see the separation let's take away those double dots all right and instead let's line break it all right so this is already going to look a little different as each one's going to become their own and let's go take a look at that okay so now each one has its own box with its own title so as you can see it's grabbing five of my most recent videos and if we go back and take a look at my most recent five videos uh, audio is going to play sorry about that oh i stopped it before good all right, so as you can see, those are my most recent uh, five all the way to Themify using blocks. If we go back and take a look, so that's it. All right, now let's do um, descriptions and thumbnails, and those are more item snippets. And I'll show you that right now. So we have the title, but underneath the title, let's just go ahead and copy this line here. All right, 
So uh, to get the description, it's actually just description. So now we have a description. And then for the thumbnail of the video, uh, there's actually, uh, YouTube has a few different ways to do this because they give you a large thumbnail, a medium, and a small based on what you're attempting to do. Let's just grab a medium thumbnail and you do that like this. And you grab that like this. But this just this is a snippet. Uh, actually, I forgot. Oh yeah, item, snippet, thumbnails, medium, URL. You could do large and small. And this just gives us the URL. It doesn't actually give us the like an image image. It just gives us the location of the image. So we actually have to output this in a uh, image HTML tag. So we'd have to open image and we'd have to say SRC equals. And, and then that needs to go into there. And then we need to, uh, oh yeah, sorry. We have to actually um, make a concatenation. So we have to use a, period to concatenate okay and then back here we could just say close it and close the image so now we have an image tag okay let's check this out and see what we get so as you can see it's now requesting my uh, thumbnail it's got my title and it's got my description with the little three ellipses dots on the end for uh, shortening and we could make it request the full description I believe but we're just kind of showing an example and this is very ugly marked up right I'm not going advanced on the markup or anything I'm just kind of saying hey uh, take a look at how this actually works so and if we we did that from these information being called real time so if I was to change the channel ID say to um, let's just do it so I'll give you an example so let's just do what I said let's go for uh, motor trend and copy the link location let's go back and get a different channel id on this channel id request there's a lot of these out there and then there's the channel id let's put the channel id back submit it and you're going to watch all these change see that uh-huh so now we're requesting motor trends most recent five videos because the code itself doesn't change the it's just the youtube key is always your key but you can do whatever channel id you want and so um also we can request in the video itself by um uh, using a video ID and then putting the video ID at the end which I'll show you that in the next video I think I'm gonna cut this one off right here because it's already getting pretty long I think it's already like 15 minutes or something but uh, I just wanted to give you an example of outputting these real time now like I said the API is requesting these every time we refresh the page Now, how many times have we re refreshed already like 10 times so that's already like what 50 requests you see how you can cap your thousand pretty quick so it would be much more efficient to save this image source location titles descriptions uh video ids all that to our database and then call those from our database not the youtube api when we're um outputting it on our website with our short code and that'll save us a lot of api requests and i'll be showing that in one of the upcoming videos on this as well uh that when we make our little youtube importer because we're gonna make a youtube importer and like i said maybe like a pokedex importer like lots of stuff, maybe a, uh, our own Google Maps importer, lots and lots of stuff. I just want to give you an example of how this works. Anyway, uh, definitely please give me a like and please subscribe. I really uh, am trying to build this channel up and uh, I look forward to seeing you guys in the next part when we actually uh, start to save some of this stuff to the database and start to actually show some uh, watchable videos on the front end. Uh, once again, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.